This is me as the CEO of the company. This is every number I track inside the company. I'm gonna walk through each of these things. So let's first talk about tracking and dashboards, then I'll go through every single number inside of here. Once again, I love the situation that I'm in in my company because I'm the free agent and I am able to just see in the dashboard what the biggest problem is in a business and then just spend all of my time ruthlessly attacking that problem. Also, the other big part about the dashboards is exactly what I was telling Justin earlier, which is that if you have tracking, you, you, all of this little petty conversations of its client success, its sales, its marketing's fault, they all just go out the window. The most uncomfortable thing about tracking, so one of our values, I'll show you really quickly. Um, so this is a great quote by, uh, by Ray Dalio. So one of our values is radical transparency. And it says, he says, if you're handling things well, radical transparency will make that clear. And if you're handling things badly, radical transparency will make that clear as well. So it helps to maintain high standards. So for example, I told you guys earlier, our sales rate is, is down this month compared to last month. And so my sales team is off KPI for our, our goals this quarter. And so on our marketing, on our team leader meeting, for lack of a better term, the sales team uh, director kind of just got laid into for like an hour. Uh, it is not necessarily laid into, but it was like the whole time was how do we fix this problem? We weren't talking about any other department, is how do we fix close rate? And then I had a follow-up call with him afterwards to talk about his dashboard, and I could tell he was kind of a little, like, I was like, you're a little quiet. He's like, you know, it's just like a lot. Like, there's, I feel like I have a lot of weight on my shoulders. But the, the reason I tell you that story is because he wasn't pointing fingers anywhere else. He, he just knew that it was on him, and he was looking to, he wants to find a way to solve that problem. So it just becomes so much less about like, I think it's this, I think it's that, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, this is what the problem is. Let's put all of our energy into it. So I'll give you an example. Because our close rate is down, um, without even being asked this morning before we came here, we have four follow-up calls set from calls yesterday. And I shot a personal Loom video to every single one of them and saying, hey, I know you had a great call with so-and-so. I know you guys covered this. We're so looking forward to your follow-up call today. And I'm going to personally be keeping track of your progress. Right? So the goal is that, first of all, they'll show up to the follow-up call now that they've seen my face and they know I'm keeping progress, and hopefully they'll also close as well. So now I, as a CEO, can focus my energy on that one little problem to help our sales team get back on KPI. Does that make sense? And then it also I highlights uh, when you start to hire people, when people are doing the right job or the wrong job, right? Also, it, uh, another funny story is that, I hope Joe wouldn't mind me saying this, but last quarter, uh, this, the client success cash was lower than it was this same quarter last year. And the biggest difference was that he didn't have that as a KPI that he was tracking for a rock for the company, for a goal. We set it as a rock this quarter, and now he's beating last quarter's numbers immediately. So there's a saying, which is what gets measured gets managed. So if, you, if you're not even looking at the number, then there's no way you can hope to improve the number, right? So this is why a dashboard is critical. And also, if you do get a dashboard, you need to have someone manage it, someone responsible to making sure the numbers are accurate, okay? Whether it's a VA, whether it's, but it could be you, but I personally, you know, maybe I'm in a fortunate position, but I pay someone else to do it. So I can just look at it and see what the problem is, okay? I'm gonna go through these numbers here. Before I go through the numbers, questions about data in general or dashboards and like that? Okay, all right. Um, so new leads, this is uh, name and emails of p new leads that have come into the company. So this isn't people that have re-opted in, this isn't middle of funnel, this isn't bottom of funnel. This is validated name and emails of people coming in here. Booked calls is people that have booked on the calendar uh, and they um, were, whether they were cur uh, curated or not curated, this is just the volume of book calls that we have. So I told you we tracked that metric earlier, but this is like, if somebody books a call and they're making zero dollars, we'll still count that as a booked call, but they're not a qualified book call. Qualified book calls is how many people that pass both auto and manual curation. Auto curation is that that person I said earlier is making zero dollars. The calendar is gonna immediately cancel them and send them an email and say, you're not qualified. Manual curation is when they get on a sales call with them and it turns out that uh, they sell physical products. So then they say, this person, I, I'm not gonna consider this a qualified book call because then if I ask sales team, why is your close rate so low? They say, we talked to 10 people today that sell physical products. And I'd be like, okay, well then that's, that, 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 that's skewing the numbers. Does that make sense? Cool, is this speed okay with what I'm coming with the numbers here? Uh, center qualified book calls. I put that on my master dashboard. I would say that you don't have to have it on there. 
only because our center team really underperformed last quarter. And so I told our sales team leader, I'm gonna put this on my dashboard because he knows that I look at the dashboard every single thing, every, every single day, first thing in the morning, seven days a week. So now that he knew that I was looking at it every single morning, all of a sudden, every week, it's it doubled the last week for set of book calls. Every week is doubled the past three weeks. If you want me to review your business's numbers and give you a custom roadmap on what I would solve in what order in order to scale, be sure to go below and book a call now. Show up rate, uh, so that's pretty obvious. For you, it's not, but for everybody else here, it's obvious. Uh, sales taken calls, so these are people that the sales actually spoke to. Another thing that I noticed was that there was like a really large discrepancy between booked calls and taking calls, and that was because I'm looking at this every single day, there might be 15 or 18 people that haven't actually had their call taken yet. There's not an outcome for that call yet. So they're scheduled for later this day or tomorrow or something like that. And so removing that from these formulas here prevents us from me saying, oh, we have a really low no-show rate or a really low close rate. Make sense? Close rate, that's obvious. Deals close, that's obvious. New cash, that's obvious. And then average cash per close, that's how much money we're making at the time of close whenever we close a deal, right? So uh, in, uh, in Q2, uh, it was 13,300. And this quarter, it's like, I think 11,000 something. It's like a 30% drop right now. So, so it's, that's pretty statistically significant and we're working on ways to do that. One, and then, so I, I saw that, I went deeper in the numbers and I saw that this time last quarter, we had already had three scaling initiative closes. And right now we only have one scaling initiative close. And typically scaling initiative closes are gonna be larger payments up front. Right? We only take uh, minimum 25,000 as the first payment for scaling initiative. So um, when someone comes in and they pay that, that's an immediate infusion of cash for the company. Make sense? Cool. Uh, and then when we come down here, oh, you have ad spend, so ad spend on a week by week basis. Um, and it, you, I can see Q2 versus Q3. So, you know, we spend $3,000 this day, $2,000 the next day, et cetera, et cetera. The leads graph, and then the rest of these are, I'm just seeing on a weekly uh, basis, the graph of, the, of those numbers. So this allows me to spot weird trends. So for example, I can see um, like one thing that I noticed last, uh, last quarter was that our book calls were shooting up but our qualified book calls were either remaining the same or going down. So whatever the source that we were doing right then and there was getting us a lot of bookings, but not a lot of qualified bookings, which is a big difference in those two. Make sense? I'll keep on going down because that's this, uh, all of these are just graphs that are the same thing. Okay, and then I transitioned to client success. So I just covered sales and marketing, and now it's client success. So client success taken calls, so that we define a taken call in this dashboard as an offer was made on that call to a current client. So an offer was made to pitch them to buy something from us, scaling initiative or renewal, something like that. Uh, deal counts, that's obvious, how many deals close, and then average uh, or new cash collected uh, during that quarter for those deals. And then the uh, ascension and renewal rates, full transparency, this number's not up yet, but I put it as a placeholder here. Um, only because we don't, we have clients inside of Asana and then we have cash inside HubSpot. So we're trying to figure out how do we read this, but my goal is to have an essential renewal rate and, and to have that as a KPI at 30%. And then same thing down here is taken calls, uh, deals closed graph and new cash collected. And, and so what you guys will notice is that there's a lot of problems that can go wrong in a business. You know, uh, at any given time, like we could have four things down. Qualified book calls are down, sale, close rate is down, show up rate is down. Client success cash is down. So then I just try to identify, I'm fortunate enough to have team leaders that are working on those problems already. But then when I'm looking at my time, I always, I follow a framework called ICS. This is how I decide every single day of my life. I is important. How important is this to how I see my dream life or my business, whatever else it is. Confident, how confident is it that if I do this thing here, it's gonna work. And simple, how simple is it to install this system? And I rate this on a scale of one to 10. This is the, how I make every decision in my life, personal and professional. It's the same way you can do marketing tests. So for example, as a very simple example, let's say that you want to change the footer legal text on your sales page. Okay, just as an extreme example. Is that important to get a lead to the bottom line? Probably not, two. Is that, uh, how confident are you that that's gonna lead to more sales? One. How simple is it? 10. 
be super simple to change the legal jargon. So you do 10 plus 2 plus 1 would be 13. But then you take something like changing a new VSL. I'd be, that's pretty important. That's the first thing they see at the top of the page. Let's say that's a 10. It leads to the, to the sale of the company. If you felt like you could beat the previous VSL, let's say you have a 7, so it's 17. And it's not that easy to run a VSL. So let's say it's a 4. So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So it's 21 versus 13. So in that example, I would choose the video sales letter first and, and launch that. Then I would go back and I would look at the dashboard again and I would rerun the numbers. And because maybe something else has jumped up above the footer uh, text thing and I would do that thing next. Does that make sense? I wish I had a whiteboard, but does that make sense? And so that's a really good framework because what's gonna, th this allows you to let shit burn, okay? Which is what I have had a hard time struggling with myself. But it's like, oh, you know you could get, have a better logo. Like, you know your content could be a little bit branded better. Like, you know this thing here, but there's just, as we all know, we all have 10,000 fi fires every single day. So this just allows you to have, at least for me, and I think this is, might be the way that I view the world, but just a more systemized way of being like, cool, I need to tackle this thing first. So some, some real life examples would be like um, our setters. So I said last quarter, our setters, um, or you know, I'll give you, I'll, no, I'll give you even a better one. Uh, our sales team, it's funny if they ever watch this videos, they might think I'm ri ripping on them, but our sales team, uh, they, want, they want to join this, um, this like sales coaching program uh, from one of our clients. And so they keep on pushing me, sales coach, like let's do this, that, that, we need to increase our close rate by doing the sales coaching program. And so I pulled up the dashboards and one of our sales guys had an average one call a day follow up in his dashboard. So every day he was averaging one call a day and he was averaging two texts a day and less than one email a day. It was like 0.5 emails a day. So I just presented him the, the thing. I said, okay, so sales coaching, I'm not saying it doesn't work, but this is important, 10 out of 10. Confident, I don't really know if it's gonna work out, uh, so I'm gonna give it a five out of 10. Simple, uh, I'm gonna give it probably a three out of 10 because like they're telling you what to do, you gotta go do it, then they gotta give feedback, then they gotta iterate, boom, 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 back around and around. So I'd give that, let's say a two. So I forgot what numbers I said, but let's say that's a seven. If you just sent, five times more follow-up. Every day you did 100 dials, 100 emails, 100 text messages. Important, 10 out of 10. Confident, do I feel like if you spoke to 10 times more people, we'd make more money? I'd say that's a nine out of 10. And simple, to send those emails, you already have the CRM, you have the templates, let's say an eight out of 10. So I said, first, you send this follow-up, and second, we will do the coaching after that, after, if, after the follow-up if we don't get our, our close rate up. Does that make sense? And that was also a great example of me having data to back up my arguments. And me not saying, oh, I, I, what I need is to go to the, this, get the sales coaching. What I really need is, and, and maybe I, I, I guarantee you, within the next 60 days, we might actually buy that. Because that actually might be the next ICS framework thing. The, the other thing I'll say about the dashboards is, um, for the, you, I know this is a lot of data for you to set up. Uh, at, right now what happens is we have a master dashboard and then every one of my departments have a, their own dashboard that uh, you can double click into. So for example, if I notice that new leads are down, I can double click into the marketing dashboard and then I can see what are the other metrics. Like click your rate is down, um, ad spend is down, whatever else it is. So that way on the call, I'm on a team leader call with our leadership team and I'm saying, why is uh, our, our, our book calls down he can pull up his dashboard and show the metrics that the reason why this is down and we know what we need to attack. But for the majority of you in here, I would just create a master dashboard. And if you guys all just track these numbers here, which by the way, it's not a lot of numbers. These are just graph versions of these numbers. If you just track all these numbers here, your business, your life would be a hundred times easier. Okay. Just having these numbers alone. So don't try to go too deep in like some of the stuff we do, like time to launch app client return on investment, all that stuff, because you just don't have the resources for it. Or majority of people here won't have the resources for it. But if you just had the master dashboard and then every department looks at the master dashboard, uh, like the sales team, they just looked at my dashboard up until, because we were doing a migration, up until we finished the migration, because it has all the important numbers anyway. 